Like craters on the moon, this is the true legacy of conflict. A great war, the visible scars that continue to haunt the landscape long after the battles have passed over. But they also hide a secret, a subterranean labyrinth of dugouts, subways and tunnels, where hand-to-hand -hand combat, gas poisoning and death by caving were regular occurrences, and where men living like troglodytes deep below the surface utilised huge caches of high explosives, mines, to destroy each other. In 1997, a team of specialists came together to excavate and make safe one of these mines. A £20,000 charge, the Broadmarsh, lying dormant beneath a busy road junction under the Canadian memorial site at Vimy Ridge, northern France. After successfully completing the operation and moved by their experiences in the tunnels, the team resolved to continue their work. They are now known as the Duran Group. Taking its name from the £6,000 Duran mine, neutralised in a second operation three months after Broadmarsh, the group's ethos is simple. Working together to research and investigate a facet of warfare that has almost been completely overlooked during the last century the war underground. Well, of course, across the whole length of the Western Front, there's probably a couple of thousand miles of tunnels, subways, dugouts. The public tend to think in terms, and those who visit, of the trench lines and don't go much further than that. What they don't really recognize is a great deal of the First World War was underground, the infantry were underground, the tunnelers were deeper below the infantry, and to get into some of these dugouts and systems, perhaps make some of them available to the public in the fullness of time, will give a much better understanding of the nature of that war. Since its formation, the Duran Group have initiated several important projects to further this goal, both at Vimy Ridge and on the Somme. They're currently working with the Canadian Heritage Project, the Tietval Interpretive Centre Project, and concerning the planned route of the Tilas Bypass around the Vimy Memorial, the Arras and Lille Archaeological Authorities. The group works closely with these local and national authorities to ensure minimum disruption to the chosen sites, while endeavouring to maximise the historical benefits accrued from an investigation. Key to their success, and before commencement of any operation, the group embarks on an extensive research programme into the historical records available. War diaries, intelligence reports and mining records provide an invaluable resource, augmented by contemporary photographs, individual service records and personal testimonies. Much of the group's achievements are underpinned here at the National Archives in London, but increasingly members also do important research work in Germany, France, Belgium, Canada and the United States. The need to accurately record and map both surface and subsurface battlefield features is crucial to the interpretive process and the group offers expertise in a number of complementary areas. Digital terrain mapping enables a more focused assessment of underground features by highlighting the subtle change in surface topography without the need for invasive excavation. In the field of non-destructive geophysical investigation, ground penetrating radar together with electromagnetic induction survey has enabled the team to target their excavations more accurately and so minimize damage to what might prove to be unique historical resources.
Where it is necessary to access the subsurface features invasively, the group have developed a novel remote endoscopic examination technique. With minimum damage caused to the fabric of the site and regular monitoring of the subsurface features, the data collected from this method is proving invaluable in the planning of excavations if or when they become necessary. Subterranean exploration is at the heart of Durand Group activity. Whether it's investigating a machine gun emplacement at the bottom of an old well, or a complete fighting tunnel system 90 feet below a front line, the group prepares for its projects with the same attention to detail. A recent excavation into part of O Sector, within the Canadian site at Vimy, but not accessible to the public, was a gargantuan task. 26 tonnes of chalk spoil, much of it bagged and bucketed by hand, was excavated from an abandoned winch chamber, employing 10 mini conveyors, a configuration not even imagined by the manufacturer, in an arduous but successful attempt to breach this beautifully preserved tunnel system. But the aggressive nature of this unique environment has also led to the group adopting a complete and substantial safety protocol to guard against the hazards that underground exploration may offer up. The group boasts a qualified doctor amongst its members and training is undertaken both on site and in the UK on a regular basis in first aid and specialist areas such as breathing apparatus operation and biological contamination procedures. One aspect of battlefield exploration demands a more rigorous safety initiative, that of explosive munitions. A key advantage for the group, distinguishing it from all others working in the field, is its expertise in explosive ordnance disposal. The legacy left behind from the Great War is colossal. Estimates of 63 million artillery shells, grenades and heavy mortar bombs still lying unexploded across the Western Front are by no means fanciful. At least a quarter of a million of these will be chemical. And a recent accident at Vimy, resulting in the complete evacuation of the village, is testament to their continuing ability to surprise. Several people are killed each year in France and Belgium handling these rusty relics and group members are on constant alert when investigating them. Surface hazards are relatively well documented, but not so the subterranean legacy. As many as 100 mines may be lying dormant under the old battlefields, some lost to enemy action and not recovered, others simply left undetonated or abandoned. The potential danger of these lost mines was demonstrated in 1955 when a 26,000-pound charge exploded in a thunderstorm at Laguerre in Belgium. It left a crater 250 feet across and 60 feet deep. To date, the group has located and made safe three of these mines, totaling over 16,000 pounds of high explosives and they're currently investigating the presence of several others on the Vimy front. But the exploration of surface and subterranean systems is only half the story. How to manage the recording, recovery, preservation and if necessary disposal of any found items or substances is a key element of the group's expertise. Recovered artifacts, equipment and clothing for instance, are processed according to current archaeological practice and handed over to the appropriate authorities for preservation and storage. Those items not recoverable, perhaps because they're fixed or too dangerous to move into public areas, are carefully recorded for future evaluation and action. The, uh, firing cables. the scale of the tunnel's efforts is matched only by the amount of wartime graffiti, carvings and illustrations to be found on the chalk walls below the trenches. 
the group have amassed a huge resource of audiovisual material from their time in the tunnels, and all of the major operations thus far have been recorded on high-quality digital video. As local communities expand, and the need for communication between them expands, this unique area, the battleground of Europe, sees a dwindling of the extent of the battlefields of the First World War. As it does so, the need for recording, preserving and more importantly interpreting this legacy is crucial. Thousands upon thousands of people are now going back to the Western Front and if we can help them understand more clearly what was involved in this war, try and take them away perhaps from the Blackadder approach of blowing a whistle going over the top and getting wiped out, then I think we are actually carrying out an important part of the job of a historian, which is to explain the past to the present. But the legacy that remains both on and below the surface is as dangerous now as it was 85 years ago. And it's only with the specialist knowledge of teams such as the Duran Group that a coherent effort to open up this subterranean twilight world to the general public will be practical. There's a certain sense of adventure, obviously, an exploratory sense when one gets into new tunnels. They've been blocked for, in most cases, 70 or more years. In the Broadmarsh Tunnel, for example, was a complete time warp. It was there just as the miners had left it. You really stepped back 75 years. You could feel the sense of the miners in there. It, it a weird feeling in a way, but a wonderful feeling too. It, it made you feel as though you belonged to the history of the time. With a unique combination of talents, ranging from explosive ordnance disposal, mining, boring, engineering and construction crafts, to project management, research, writing and documentary skills, the Duran Group offers an unrivaled capability within the emerging discipline of 20th century battlefield archaeology. <laughs>